Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Today is a lovely day. It's also the last day of January. This coming week, we have a bunch of cool things happening um, kind of cosmologically. Today is the new moon. So last night, tomorrow night, no moon. Also, it's halfway between the solstice and the equinox this week. The second Wednesday is Candlemas, and Candlemas is a big thing. I love Candlemas. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday and probably tomorrow too, because I really can't help myself. Anyway, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Linda asks in the chat, what time is Mass on Wednesday? Mass on Wednesday is the normal time, 8 a.m. So there you go. All right, let's get to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. An informant came to David with the report. The children of Israel have transferred their loyalty to Absalom. At this, David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, up, let us take flight or none of us will escape from Absalom. Leave quickly, lest he hurry and overtake us, then visit disaster upon us and put the city to the sword. As David went up to the Mount of Olives, he wept without ceasing. His head was covered and he was walking barefoot. All those who were with him also had their heads covered and were weeping as they went. As David was approaching Baharim, a man named Shammai, the son of Gera, of the same clan as Saul's family, was coming out of the place, cursing as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the king's officers, even though all the soldiers, including the royal guard, were on David's right and on his left. Shammai was saying as he cursed, away, away, you murderous and wicked man. The Lord has requited you for all the bloodshed in the family of Saul, in whose stead you became king. And the Lord has given over the kingdom to your son, Absalom. And now you suffer ruin because you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zehuriah, said to the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, please, and lop off his head. But the king replied, what business is it of mine or of yours, sons of Zehuriah, that he curses? Suppose the Lord has told him to curse David. Who then will dare to say, why are you doing this? Then the king said to Abishai and to all his servants, if my own son who came forth from my loins is seeking my life, how much more might this Benjamite do so? Let him alone and let him curse for the Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will look upon my affliction and make it up to me with benefits for the curses he is uttering this day. David and his men continued on the road, while Shammai kept abreast of them on the hillside, all the while cursing and throwing stones and dirt as he went. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, rise up and save me. Lord, rise up and save me. O Lord, how many are my adversaries? Many rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no salvation for him in God. Lord, rise up and save me. But you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory. You lift up my head when I call out to the Lord. He answers me from his holy mountain. Lord, rise up and save me. When I lie down and sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. Lord, rise up and save me. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has risen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, what is your name? He replied, legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swineherds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by Legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Since it's Monday, Seminarian Anthony will be taking the reflection, so let's do it. All right. Uh, thank you, Father, as always. So before I begin on like my actual reflection, I, I've got to say this. This is one of those things that my tangents that normally come out later on, but I'm beginning with the tangent. Does anybody else feel like they're listening to or watching a soap opera when they read the life of King David? I mean, it's, to me, it's fascinating. There's, there's all these good things. There's these bad things he's doing. You know, he, he, I don't know. Another episode today of David's life 
Now his son wants to kill him. I mean, if, if this was a soap opera, it, you'd be going, oh, you can't make this up. What's going to happen next, right? And I mean, it's going to get more and more fascinating, of course, because it always does, just like in a soap opera, we get little bits and pieces. And then next time there's going to be something even greater and we're going to hear, you know, whatever. I'm not a big soap opera fan. So, I mean, days of my lives are the only ones like name that I know, but it's just like, it just seems like there's so many ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. And, and so anytime I, I, we read through David's life, it's just like, come on, are you that dumb? Ah, I think. Okay, sorry. That was my tangent. When it, it always, it just always go that way whenever I think of David. The, the interesting thing that we have today going on is the gospel. Jesus is traveling to a town that he probably wouldn't typically travel to, right? It's not an Israelite community that he's going to. One of the key things that we know from that is because there's so many swine there, right? And pigs, of course, are not an animal that the Israelites would eat. They are not cult, kosher, cold, whatever, kosher, kosher, there we go. So it's interesting that the demons are sent into these swine. Now, Jesus doesn't go to spread the gospel and teach everybody there what's going on. He's not going there to go travel. He's just going there basically for this one man. And more interesting than anything is we don't ever even learn what this man's name is. He's just the possessed man. We learned who it is that possesses him. We learned his name is Legion. And we know a few things. We know that because Legion is possessing this man, this man is really strong. So strong that he can break irons and shackles. And people are, are afraid of him. So he's on the outskirts of town, not in town key thing there he's on the outskirts of town so he's not causing a lot of trouble within town like going around you know breaking buildings or any of that kind of stuff he's he's outside of town but there's with it being outside of town people can't go to the burial plots and spend time with their loved ones that have passed away because he's going to drive them away he's going to scare them away the only ones that are even anywhere close to him that we get is the swine herders, which is fascinating in itself as well. So this legion, he comes to Jesus and acknowledges him, not the man, but legion. And multiple times throughout scriptures, we see that those who are being possessed come forth and say, Jesus, son of God, Jesus, we know who you are, the Holy One. What are you going to do with us? And they, in a sense, kind of are afraid. They know of his authority. They know of his power. They know that what he can do is pretty intense stuff. And so they come to him and, and quivering and, and in a way asking for mercy. And in this case, specifically, we really see that mercy happening. because. How easy God, or how easy Jesus could have just taken and just sent him away. But instead, he allows them to go into the swine, which is, again, a very interesting thing. When the Israelites would be reading this, the recent converts, they really wouldn't have had much, emo much emotion for the swine, right? They would have been like, okay, it's an unclean animal. We don't really care about them. At least they didn't go into something of value. Something like a lamb or a sheep or a goat. Something that had value. And it didn't go into another person either. But it went from somebody who would have had little value at that point. Because everybody in the community wrote him off. They didn't want anything to do with him. So in the community's eyes, this man had no value. And in the Israelites' 
it went from a man of no value to swine of no value. The swine were able to go off to the cliff. For us, when we hear that, a lot of times, at least when I first began hearing that scripture, I'd always think that's very unjust that a, a pig would have to be sacrificed for a human. But again, if we put ourselves into the shoes of the time of the people, it's one unjust thing to another unjust thing or an unworthy thing to another unworthy thing. So it's kind of an equilateral thing. The other really big thing that I get stuck on when I, when I meditate on the scripture is that he's not allowed to follow Jesus. Instead, he's told to stay where he's at and to go back to his family. So we learn finally something about this man. We learn that he does have a family. And how easy would it have been for Jesus to be able to say, yeah, get into the boat, come follow me. You can join my friend group here and we're going to go and share the good news with other people. And you've now been saved. You're one of us. Let's go and do this. But here's the tangent. All of the people in the community now dislike Jesus. So much so that they want him gone. They drive him out. And it's kind of understandable because the community have just lost their resource, a huge resource. Thousands of pigs are now gone. That would have been a lot of food for a lot of people. And of course, I think I would probably be kind of mad at him too. You know, if I lost all of my pigs, if I had thousands of pigs and they are now gone. So in a way... He's saving the people. He's giving them an opportunity to continue to learn who Jesus actually is, who he himself actually is. Because the only experience they've now had of him is a bad one. Now, this is where it comes into us. We are those like the man that was possessed by legion. We've experienced Jesus in a very intense way. We know who he actually is. Now, there are a lot of people in the world who have only seen or only experienced in their minds something bad from the church or from Jesus. And of course, there's no actual bad there, right? Jesus isn't going to actually be bad. But some people experience a bad thing. And for us, it provides us an opportunity to be able to go out and follow, not only follow him, but go out and teach about him all the more and provide the example of our experience with Jesus. And so while we aren't literally in that friend group traveling because we are distanced by time, we are like him in that we are with our families. And we are telling each other and everybody in the world about Jesus, about our experience with him. And so maybe from by doing that, we will be able to influence somebody to realize that the authentic Jesus is actually somebody who cares, who loves the person, who cares about the person, and will do anything possible to save the person. As always, thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Thank you, Anthony. Hey, so the story of David, yes, is very um, soap opera-like, but I just want to call like one bit of just attention. So today, the story about David from Kings was that he went up to the Mount of Olives and cried over betrayal. Does that sound like anyone else? It's a type of Jesus. It's part of the story, and it's a kind of important one. But at the same time, like, if you're just reading Kings and you don't know the rest of the story or you're not paying attention to it, well, you know, it, it obviously doesn't connect. Not saying that it's not like, not, not complaining about the, is it like a soap opera? No, it totally is. And that's also kind of one of the reasons why in like Kings and then Chronicles, especially, especially Chronicles, the, the, the Kings are, are kind of sad in a way. And in fact, here we have, like this 
a fellow from the house of Saul coming up and complaining about it. It's, it's meant to be a little bit petty. And that's also kind of like the, the broad scope of this, how what is in this case a rather petty and unfortunate moment is brought to a very important conclusion in the story of Christ. Kind of how God works after all, all the little things actually matter. There's so much to talk about, there always is. The story of the Gerizim demoniac also, so much to talk about. We could do it for days, but we're gonna stop now. So as we always do, let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention this month, for those suffering from religious discrimination and persecution, that their own rights and dignity be recognized. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that as we commemorate this month of the holy name of Jesus, we remember to call upon his name for any and all of our needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that all those who put themselves in harm's way to protect others will be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lapsed and fallen away Catholics, that they will allow Christ back into their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for who and what else shall we pray? And Francis, for trust in the Lord and for those who suffer from mental illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest, St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We didn't talk about John Bosco, sorry. John Bosco was a wonderful saint. Um, so the order that he's famous for is not named after him, but rather St. Francis de Sales, when we celebrated a little while ago, is kind of confusing. So don't be confused by it. The Salesians are John Bosco's people. They're named after, you know, Francis de Sales, though. And of course, the other saints who are part of the Salesian world through John Bosco um, are many and also very important, but we're not going to talk about it. Sorry. Anyway, John Bosco, great guy. Look him up. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you, and by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone have a lovely Monday and good beginning of the week. God bless you all and see you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.